name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today I wish to speak about dominoes. Now when you hear the word dominoes, what comes immediately to mind? The fast food pizza chain, of course. Or perhaps, what's another thing that might come to mind? Those spectacular, elaborate arrays of hundreds, even thousands of little rectangular blocks that we see on television or online. You know, where the, the creator pushes the first little domino and they cascade all the way around until the last one falls. I think the longest domino chain reaction occurred last year in the Netherlands, 2022. I looked this up, actually. 2022. 750,000 dominoes. It's mind-boggling. Can you imagine how long it took to set those up? You know, sometimes you make a mistake and the whole thing starts falling. 750,000 dominoes. I watched this live. It took 17 minutes for all the dominoes to fall. Some people apparently have too much time on their hands. <coughs> well, the dominoes I have in mind today describe the brilliant, inspired thoughts of the epistle reading for today, chapter 5, verses 1 through 10 of the Apostle Paul's Epistle to the Romans. Webster's Dictionary, no relation, alas, defines the so-called domino effect this way. A cumulative effect produced when one event initiates a succession of similar events. Let me try that again. The cumulative effect produced when one event initiates a succession of similar events, dominoes. But keeping that in mind, we can perceive a domino effect in these words of the Apostle Paul, we heard just moments ago, who assures us in today's epistle, quote, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we've obtained access to God's grace in which we stand and we rejoice in our hope of sharing the glory of God. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us because God, God's love, has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us, Romans 5, verses 1 through 5. So here are the seven dominoes of our salvation and our eternal life. Faith, peace, grace, suffering, endurance, character, and hope. So let's, let's now explore how some of the ancient church fathers who commented on Romans 5, verses 1 through 10, explain this dynamic process of what they, and we call, theosis. That is a favorite Greek term that denotes how we human beings, many of you know this already, I hope everybody knows it, frankly, how human beings can become more and more like God himself. Root word is there, it's becoming like God. In our daily lives and throughout our, our entire lives as Orthodox Christians. For theosis is what the Apostle Paul illustrates in this biblical passage long before that Greek term was even used and became normative in the patristic era. Becoming more and more like God. The first two dominoes are, once again, faith and peace. The Apostle Paul reveals in Romans 5.1 that since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. His interpretation of Romans 5.1-10 through 10, in the, the 5th century, Theodoret of Kiros in northwestern Syria explains that linkage as follows, quote, Faith has given you, that is us, forgiveness of sins and made you spotless and righteous 
by the washing of regeneration. Therefore, you ought to keep the peace by which you have been united with God, unquote. Note that contrary to the German Roman Catholic priest, Martin Luther, who inaugurated the Protestant Reformation. And in fact, the entire Protestant Reformation after that in the 16th century, St. Paul does not say faith alone. A little historical tidbit. When Luther translated, any Lutherans here should know this, I hope. I'm a former Lutheran, a former Catholic too. I'm a former a lot of things. <laughs> not Orthodox, I'm Orthodox all the way. Where, Christ, where Paul writes, just like by faith, Luther added the Greek, the Roman word align. Did I pronounce it correctly? Align or align? He added the word alone. It's not in the Bible. So we just heard the text uh, chanted by the reader, and I just quote it again. By faith, just by, by faith, not by faith alone. As if our faithful and virtuous deeds mean nothing whatsoever in the progress of salvation. St. Paul simply points to faith as the first domino in our salvation. St. John Chrysostom, late in the fourth century, elaborated on the second domino, peace, as the fruits of our faith. Quote, what does it mean to have peace? Some say it means that we should not fall out with one another because of disagreements over the law. But it seems to me that he, St. Paul, St. John Chrysostom commenting about St. Paul, St. Paul was speaking much more about our current behavior. Paul means here that we should stop sinning and not go back to the way we used to live, for that is to make war with God, unquote. So peace of soul instead of war against God. The third domino of salvation is grace. Here is St. John Chrysostom again, quote, what grace is, what grace is it to which we now have access? It is being counted worthy of the knowledge of God, being forced to abandon error, coming to the knowledge of the truth. For we were not reconciled merely in order to receive forgiveness of sin. We were meant to receive countless additional other benefits as well. Unquote. As we experience those benefits of God's grace as faithful Orthodox Christians, the Apostle Paul exclaims in Romans 5, 3 that we heard this, uh, this morning, that we rejoice in our share hope of the sharing of the glory of God. We rejoice in our hope of sharing the glory of God. But even more than that, St. Paul says, we rejoice in our sufferings, the fourth domino of salvation. Now, wait a minute. Wait just a minute. Why and how could we possibly do that? Joy with our sufferings? It makes no earthly sense. That's because it's not earthly. It's heavenly. Origin. A complex theologian in Alexandria, Egypt, in the 2nd century provided this insight for us. Quote, Paul says that he rejoices in his sufferings, not as an end in themselves, but because they lead to various virtues of the soul. If suffering produces patience, and patience is one of the virtues of the soul, then there is no doubt that suffering must not be called an evil or neutral, but defined as good, unquote. Also in his commentary on St. Paul's Epistle to the Romans, a mysterious Latin church father in the fourth century named Ambrosiaster. We don't know much about him. He offered these pearls of wisdom concerning the domino of suffering. Quote, since it is through tribulations that we must enter the kingdom of God, Paul teaches that we should rejoice in them, believing that we will be all the more acceptable to God as we ourselves are made stronger in the face of of tribulation, unquote. Therefore, suffering, which none of us welcome, should be accepted and even embraced as a laboratory for the cultivation of virtue. In his commentary on our first epistle reading today, Ambrosiaster 
that sort of mysterious Latin church father, also linked suffering to what we call the fifth domino of salvation. Number five, endurance. Quote, suffering produces endurance as long as it is not the result of weakness or doubt, unquote. St. John Chrysostom shared that observation a generation later in Byzantium when he wrote, quote, consider how great the things to come are when we can rejoice at things which appear to be distressful. Sufferings are in themselves a good thing insofar as they prepare us for endurance, unquote. Each one of us, I'm pretty sure, knows what it's like to suffer. I think even the children of us. What then is the meaning of endurance? And how do we know when we have toppled that spiritual domino in our lives? Any of us who have engaged in successfully in strenuous or intense physical feats for long periods of time, athletic events such as long distance running, a marathon. By the way, has anybody run a marathon in this church? My hat's off. Does one of my daughters run a marathon? Yeah, my youngest daughter, I thought so. My youngest daughter, Colleen, did this. And she's, of course, as you are, obviously, a strong athlete. But we're talking here about over time, athletic events like long distance running, long bicycle trips, or, for those of you still in school, all nighters to prepare for a final exam in school. That's strenuous. That takes endurance. Spiritual endurance means maintaining our abiding faith in God the Holy Trinity whenever we confront man-made obstacles such as anti-Christian bigotry or persecution. And the simple temptation to give up or give in. Truly faithful Orthodox Christians are not quitters. We can and ought to aspire to the Apostle Paul's own life of endurance, which he proclaims to his young protege in his second epistle to St. Timothy, speaking to St. Timothy, his protege, quote, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. St. Paul's not boasting. He's simply standing the fact as an encouragement to us. Finally, today's epistle reading presents two more dominoes of salvation, character and hope. Character and hope. That's our seven. The Apostle Paul assures us in his epistle that endurance strengthens and improves our own personal character. Once again, St. John Chrysostom is our sure guide for understanding character. He explains the direct causality of endurance to character this way. Quote, endurance produces character which contributes in some measure to the things which are yet to come because it gives power to the hope which is within us. Nothing encourages a man to hope for a blessing more than the strength of a good character. No one who has led a good life worries about the future, unquote. Hmm. What a blessed assurance. What a blessed assurance that is. Whenever, not if, we endure our suffering successfully and become stronger in faith because of them. We who shape our personal character until our soul is marked. For the ancient Greek word, karasso, was the inspiration for the term character as a permanent engraving on the soul in the positive sense as fundamentally good, pious, moral, upstanding, righteous, or virtuous. The canonized Orthodox saints are the best examples to follow of our Lord Jesus Christ. The saints whose moral and spiritual character and by their death were unmovable and unchangeable in their faith. Brothers and sisters, there is nothing stopping us, nothing stopping us from eventually reaching that lofty status in this life not just the next. 
In that same homily on Romans 5.11, 5.1 to 11, St. John Chrysostom completed the Pauline, I should say Pauline, the Pauline dominoes of salvation by linking character to hope. Hope. Well, does our good really lie in hope? Yes. But not in human hopes, which often vanish and leave only embarrassment behind. Our hope is in God and is therefore sure and immovable, unquote. Now there is a magnificent promise worth remembering as long as we live on this earth, sure and immovable. Ambrosi asked of that mysterious Latin church father, whom I like to quote today, provided another exclamation point regarding hope. When he said, hope does not let us down, even though we are considered by evil people to be stupid and naive because we believe in things which are impossible in this world. For we have in us the pledge of God's love through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us that there should be hope in someone who has been tried and tested is perfectly reasonable. One who is made worthy is sure to receive a reward in the kingdom of God, unquote. If I were using a microphone today, I would do a mic drop now. So there we have St. Paul's seven-step domino sequence in salvation in this life on earth. Once again, faith, peace, grace, suffering, endurance, character, and hope. Our road ahead is clearly mapped out for us. It is up to each one of us to begin or continue. A lot of us have been doing the Orthodox uh, faith experience for quite some time to continue that good news of Jesus Christ and the manifold holy tradition of our Orthodox Church, that should give us the peace that passes all understanding, Philippians 4, 7, which comes from God the Holy Trinity alone through his divine and unmerited grace. That peace and grace should sustain us through all suffering in our lives, even persecution, if that should come our way. And I'm worried about our country, I'll say it out loud. Which in turn, will strengthen our endurance and help us to shape and God willing perfect our moral character, our personal character as a man or woman devoted to God through the unshakable hope that is within us. Think of it. All of that begins with a gentle push on that first domino in the line of dominoes. Amen.